Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to be looking at two complex problem solving techniques. The first one is the Delphi technique, and the second one is the force field analysis. You may have visited these in grade 10, but now we're just going to emphasize again how one would go about using them. So we're going to look at the Delphi technique first. And this is a very structured communication technique. And it's developed so that can, one can interact with panels of experts who can help you reach a consensus in order to solve a problem. So how it works is as follows. A panel consisting of people who have knowledge and experience in a particular subject area is selected. A questionnaire is then drawn up that contains questions on the selected topic and is distributed to this panel. Now remember that this panel is made up of experts in that field. So the questionnaire is then distributed. The responses are summarized by the researcher and grouped according to similarity. From these responses, a second questionnaire is drawn up so that it will bring the responses in line with each other. The second questionnaire is distributed together with a summary of the findings of the first questionnaire. The panel members can now see the previous responses and their motivation. They need to keep this in mind when responding to the second set of questions. This normally continues for three to four rounds until panel members are requested to motivate why they don't agree with the general consensus. Members do not know at any time how many other members responded. So the advantages of using the Delphi technique include things like anonymity, which means nobody knows who said what. There's no chance of influencing one another because all these experts on this panel live across the globe. Feedback is controlled in a central place by the researcher. But statistical methods can be used to classify responses. The disadvantage of using the Delphi technique is that it is very time consuming. Just think of collating all those responses after round one, round two, round three, and round four. So there's a large amount of admin work that needs to take place. The last disadvantage is that the response rate could be really low. So the panel of experts that you send these questionnaires to may take a long time to reply or just not reply at all. The second complex problem solving technique we're going to look at and study is the force field analysis. If you think of the word force, it's about pushing or pulling, all right? So we look at factors that push or factors that pull. And then we allocate a score depending how important we believe that factor to be. So I'm going to put up an example of what a force field analysis looks like. So in the center, you write the dilemma or you write the problem. So this one is upgrade the factory with new manufacturing machinery. So forces for the change, right, are written on the left-hand side. Customers want new products and the new machinery will help develop that. It will speed up the production. It will raise the volume of output. You'll be able to make more things. And next to all these forces for change, you can see numbers allocated next to them. And if we add those numbers up, 4 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1, we'll see that that totals 10. If we look on the right-hand side, these are forces against the change of upgrading the manufacturing machinery. Okay? Staff may feel a little bit overwhelmed. Staff may no longer be able to work overtime because these machines can work faster. It's very expensive to buy this machinery. It's going to disrupt the manufacturing process to start off with. And once again, scores have been rated next to each one of these forces against the change. And if we add 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1, we can see that that gives us a total of 11. So just based on this basic example, one can see that we have more pulling us away from doing this. We have more forces against the change with a total of 11 points, and we have less on the left-hand side for forces for the change. You will often be asked to do a force field analysis.
So let's just recap those steps to follow. Describe the current situation as it is now and the desired situation. Identify what will happen if there is no action taken and list all the forces for and the forces against the proposed change. Discuss the key constraint forces and determine their strengths and discuss the key driving forces and determine their strengths. Allocate a score to each force using a numerical scale where 1 is the very weakest and 10 is the strongest. In the scale list, the driving forces on the left hand side are less than those on the right hand side. Right, I hope that that has helped and I strongly advise that you do the activity in your books.